let's start off with my all-time favorite racing shoe. So a simple running shoe rotation for me consists of three different shoe categories. The first being daily running shoes, the second being shoes to do speed work in, and the third category to be race day shoes. Some people can get away with having two pairs of running shoes, some people even prefer to train in just one pair of shoes that they can do all their training and race in. But in today's video I'm going to share with you the benefits of building your own shoe rotation. There's been some studies recently done that have found that shoes such as the Nike Alpha Fly can actually improve running efficiency um, between 2 to 6% depending on different runners. So literally choosing the right shoe for you can make the difference between getting a PB and not getting a PB. The same goes for daily miles you want to have a shoe that you're comfortable in that you can get out the door and you can run miles and miles and miles without getting injured the second benefit that I just touched on there is injury prevention other studies have found that the difference in drop between shoes can also help reduce injuries so for example if one day you run in a shoe that has an offset of 10 millimeters um, between heel and forefoot and then another day you choose a drop say a four mil that can actually help with reducing injuries it just makes sure that you're using using all the muscles in your legs, in your ankles, and you're not neglecting any muscles. You can also vary the stack height. So for example, one day you can run in a maximal cushion shoe, and then another day a more minimal shoe. And it just helps prevent those injuries from occurring that can happen if you run in the same shoe over and over again. And the third big benefit is it spreads the wear and tear across all your running shoes. So if you've just got one pair of shoe that you use for all of your runs, that shoe is quickly going to wear out, lose efficiency, it's going to bottom out and yet again it can cause injury. If you rotate between a few pairs of shoes that can really help not only um, increase the longevity of your shoes, it can also save the race day options for races so you don't have to do in your, your training in them which means when it comes to race day they're nice and fresh they're as responsive as they can be so as i said a simple running shoe rotation would be daily easy running shoes a shoe that you can do some speed work in and race day shoes but for me i've actually developed six different categories of running shoes and i thought it'd be quite cool to talk through some of the shoes that i use so i've picked two or three for each category starting with the slowest category which is recovery run working all the way up to my race day options. I could literally sit here all day and talk you through each and every one of these shoes but then the video would probably be well over an hour so I'm just going to keep this nice and brief. So the first category is recovery runs. Now for recovery you want a shoe with max cushions, one that's going to pr protect your legs and I personally prefer a little bit of a softer ride. So my go-to recovery run um, shoe at the moment is the Nike Invincible. Other options I have are the Sockney Ride 15. Again, max cushioned, just helps protect the legs on the days where you need something a bit more um, underfoot to help you with that recovery. Say if you've done a hard session the day before or a long run, um, the Nike Invincible and the Ride 15 are my go-to for recovery. So the next category is easy runs or your daily mileage. And the main priority for those for me is comfort. So my go-to recovery run shoe at the moment is the On Cloud Monster. This is one of my favorite shoes of the year. Again, more max cushions, they help protect the legs. They're very, very comfortable and great for those easy miles. Before I had the Cloud Monster, the go-to easy run shoe for me was the Hocker Mac 4. Recently, the Hocker Mac 5 has come out. Hopefully I'll get that in for testing. But yeah, I ran over a thousand kilometers in this shoe, so it's worth a mention a great easy day option and if you can get it on discount then I would recommend it. So the third category for me is tempo, tempo runs. So runs where you pick up the pace a little bit around six or seven out of ten and my go to is a new one, um, the Saucony Speed 3. Previously I used the Saucony Speed 2 for my tempo runs. These have a nylon plate and they're great for picking up the pace. Again very very comfortable and yeah ideal for tempo work. Another good shoe to try for your tempo runs is the New Balance Rebel V2. A little bit lighter than the Saucony Speed 3, but slightly less durable. Another good option, very responsive. Both of the shoes are nice and responsive, so great. they feel great when picking up the pace. On to the fourth category for me, which is road intervals. Again, another new one um, that I've been trying recently, and that is the Asics um, Metaspeed Edge 
plus. I just find this shoe great for the road intervals, especially when I'm looking to pick up the pace. I prefer to use carbon racing shoes in my training, and these are my go-to for intervals at the moment. Um, but before I had the Asics, um, the Vaporfly, again, was a great option for road um, intervals for me. Also a great racing option. So moving on to my track intervals, my go-to shoe at the moment for those is either the Takumi um, racing shoe. This one is called the Avanti TYO. This one has a little bit more stack height than say some of the other racing spikes out there. Um, great grip and yeah, just helps protect my legs a little bit more in the training runs. If I don't want to use spikes, I go for the Nike Streak Fly. Um, this is exceptional on the track and on the grass actually, a really good grip. Um, again, a lower stack height, very, very lightweight and great for track intervals. And finally, the race day options. So yeah, I am very fortunate that I get to try a wide range of shoes here on YouTube um, to share with you. So in 2022, I'm confident that now all running shoes have basically caught up with Nike and now offer a carbon racing shoe that are pretty much on par with each other. It's basically made my job a little bit harder when it comes to reviewing. I can't really say which shoe I would recommend over another. You basically have to try them and, and see which ones work for you. It also depends on your race distance as well that you're targeting. So for me, let's start off with my all time favorite racing shoe and that is the Nike Alpha Fly, the original. I ran my 10K half marathon and marathon PB in this shoe. I just feel super efficient when running in it. Um, and yeah, it's my go to for any race distance for 10K and above. I recently got the Alpha Fly 2 in, which I again, I need to test a little bit more compared to the original, um, but I'm already really getting on well with this shoe. I'm actually gonna race in it this weekend at the Norwich 10K. I'm still undecided which I prefer between the original and the new version, but yeah, like I said, I need to try a little bit more training in this shoe before I can make that decision. Adidas's response to the Nike Alpha Fly is their new Adios Pro 3. This shoe really, really, um, Surprise me out of the box. It's a max um, stack height shoe. We've got 39.5 millimeters of Light Strike Pro in the back. Carbon infused rods um, are very stable, probably more comfortable than the Alpha Fly. And from my recent testings, it's as efficient um, for performance. I did the same session in, in both the Alpha Fly and the Adidas shoe. And my findings, basically, um, in the simplest form, they performed exactly the same in terms of speed and performance. The shoe I recently raced in at the Asics 10K was the Metaspeed Sky Plus. Um, this is probably the most comfortable racing shoe I have in my shoe rotation. I think it may be slightly less efficient um, in comparison to the Nike Alpha Fly. By the way, these are all my opinions, so you may find that this shoe is the most efficient for you over the Alpha Fly, or some people might even prefer, say, the Vapor Fly. I know that's a very, very popular shoe, but yeah, these are just my opinions. Very, very comfortable, straight out of the box, um, and yeah, if I was doing a marathon, this would definitely be a contender. And the final shoe in my rotation is the Nike Dragonfly. Again, falls under that racing category. Um, any track races, 5K, 10K, 3K, I like to use the Nike Dragonfly. Um, it's just the lightest, most responsive, um, and yeah, it's hard to beat really when it comes to races. So there we have 15 shoes that are currently in my rotation. Now that is at the very, very um, sort of top end of the spectrum. I'm not saying you need 15 pairs of shoes. In fact, that is far too many um, to have in your rotation. I'd recommend three up to five maybe for um, your training. And yeah, it depends on a number of factors really on how to pick your own shoe rotation. I know for a fact that for me, I really liked the Cloud Monster as a sort of midfoot striker. Those who land on their forefoot don't necessarily get on well with that shoe. So it's, it's important to note that some people get on really well with some shoes, um, a lot more than others. So to wrap this video up, to build your running shoe rotation, I've come up with some top tips. The first would be to sort of go down to your local running specialist store, have a little chat with one of the people in there, they can offer you some advice um, based on your training, what you're training for, the terrain you run on, your foot strike, your form, and they can basically suggest which shoes um, are best for you. You can try them on the treadmill in a lot of places. Another good tip is to look at the returns policies online. So for example, if you're buying, say, a Nike Vaporfly, um, 
they're very expensive shoe and you want to be able to send it back if it doesn't work for you so if you have any questions about running shoes about running shoe rotation then feel free to leave them in the comments i'll get back to you as soon as i possibly can but yeah that's how i built my running shoe rotation i hope you can take away um, some tips from today's video to apply it to your own but until next time aspire to run run to inspire and we'll see you again soon Thank you.